Super Moon Tarot, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at messages from your spirit guides. You know how much I love my spirit guides. <laughs> and the cool thing about them is they've always got something to say. I'm actually doing whatever I can to get you guys to kind of um, more easily connect to them. I highly recommend tarot as one of those ways because before you're really skilled at being able to get over to the spirit realm or very commonly when people start going over the spirit realm it's this idea of like i don't know i'm not quite sure people deal with their doubts that's how you build up the ability when it comes to your psychic uh capabilities <laughs> i don't mean to be redundant anyway so i want to go over anything crucial you need to know right now that can be most helpful in your life that your spirit guides are trying to tell you and you're trying to you know you're trying to hear it. you're trying to reach out <laughs> And maybe it might even have to do with being able to reach out to them and how to do it. So as you can see, we have four groups in front of us. I have covered up the affirmation verbiage part of it. So you pick more on feeling rather than association through words. You know, we're going more through your energies and vibes because uh, sometimes our mind tricks us, <laughs> uh, but not our intuition. <laughs> so anyways, we have group number one, two, three, and four, I'm gonna give you a moment to pick the group that you resonate with most. Okay, I'm so excited to get into this. You can go down to the description where you can go to your designated group with its marked timestamp. And let's get started with group number one. Group number one, let's find out those messages from your spirit guides by looking at the cards. We have our affirmation card that we will be going on, reviewing later on. We've got two of wands, four of pentacles, the justice card in reverse, the seven of swords in reverse. Ooh, interesting. And the sun card in reverse. Give me a moment. My spirit guide's also talking to me as I'm seeing some puzzle pieces. Let me let me hear all the information in order to properly connect to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I love this. This is so interesting. So this is one of my more favorite type of readings because we have a bunch of different things going on. This is the main issue and culprit. But I need to explain these separate things over here and these separate things over here in order to understand how they all interconnect, how your inner being is trying to show reflective patterns to your outer being. You're like, you know, we're talking about the subconscious and your, your consciousness in order to say like your inner self is trying to tell your outer self like, hey, this is what's going on. So you can best recognize the signs and get better at interpreting this yourself and some practical applications, which we love. So let's first start off with the justice card in reverse. What my spirit guide is saying is that you are going through a time period right now where you feel like you're being owed something. You, you, you feel that you are owed and you're not getting it. The best way to explain this concept is like when the justice card is upright, you do a certain amount of work, you get an equivalent exchange of recognition, money, whatever that may be. So this could be anything from a job, following your dreams, figuring out your emotions. It's a pretty big uh, concept that can relate to anything, but you just feel like you're putting effort towards something, whatever that may be, financial or emotionally, or, you know, partner or whatever. And it's just, you're not getting it back and you're starting to get frustrated. And that is so understandable. Now, we're not asking you to change your attitude. In fact, there's something else going on to pull you out of that mindset. I am really happy to say that I double checked and was like, is this karmic related? Because sometimes with the justice card, it, re it refers to karma, karmic contracts. This just means that this is something you signed up for before you got here. And, you know, you could potentially go into your contract, change that, whatever. We can get those type of answers. That's not the case. Um, however, it working out, and this is where it gets really weird and mysterious. Um, the way that this is all functioning and working out is needing to work out the way it does because it's a necessity for you to make certain connections uh, intellectually. So what I'm about to tell you is a little odd. <laughs> I already asked. I was like, why is this happening the way it is? And they were like, it's just the way it needs to work out. So let's get into it. So in order to get out of here, 
we have what's going on over here in the Seven of Swords in reverse. I also double check this. This is not referring to a specific person. My spirit guide just simply describes it as your dreams are literally running away from you. And I was like, why? And they were like, this is just how it works. So there's not like a deeper reason as in you're pushing them away. It's almost like it needs to work out this way so you can follow them and so on and so forth. So we have two things going on here, which is important with the sun card in reverse representing this kind of, think of this as like when you get here, this is the dreams. This is you experiencing the dreams. This is the happiness behind the dreams. And the act of the dreams themselves being carried away or carrying themselves away, running away. Now, the important thing here is to not feel frustrated that it always feels without, with, uh, out of grasp. You're not getting what you owed. It's realizing that with these two swords left behind as the person uh, scurries away, you are being left a couple crumbs of positive reflections that you are doing the right thing. This is the occasional person giving you a compliment. This is maybe something, uh, one moment in the day, something works out better than you had hoped, but maybe in the end you didn't get chosen for something, but something did work out better than you hoped. Um, you know, maybe someone texts you back initially, but in the long run, you don't feel like it's going anywhere and you're not going on more dates kind of thing. You are being given some little clues and hints and moments where things are working out and you're kind of getting not the full proportion of what you deserve, of what you've been putting effort towards, but you are getting something. So it's about acknowledging that, not because you're ungrateful, anything like that, not at all. This is completely understandable that you're frustrated. It's about following it as a sort of crumb being left in the road. And then as they scurry, they will drop more and you'll notice more of them. And you're trying to kind of, instead of putting out a hand and going, where is it? You're like, hunting it down. <laughs> and this is how you are going to get your way out of this position and then be in a position where you're, along the way you're kind of receiving proportions of the ultimate goal and dream you're putting effort towards. And then in the end, you're going to get there and you're going to receive the whole thing. But this is, you're kind of, you're, it's not about you being not appreciative. It's about this being the indicator of what to do next, where to follow next. And you're sort of chasing after it in this very fun way that doesn't let you get down when you're not getting the whole thing. It's like an abstract perspective, I guess is the best way to put it. But I just want to be absolutely clear. It's not because you're not being grateful enough. It's just a weird chain of events that are happening. Anyways, continuing on. The other thing that's super important over here is the perspective with the sun card in reverse that also needs to be changed. So you don't feel like it's always without your grasp and you don't feel down in the process as you're sort of hunting down your dreams and saying like, I'm following you. I see when the compliments are coming my way. I see them, I'm following you, which will then lead you to the next bit and next bit and so on and so forth. See so over here, the sun card is in reverse. Traditionally, when it is upright, this would be really wonderful. Um, true optimism, happiness, the whole nine yards. It's a really great sunshiny rainbow time. It's very, it's simplistic happiness. Uh, it's like the general scope of happiness compared to the 10 of cups, which is about bliss associated with like other people and like meeting your true love and so on and so forth. This is just like the simplicity of like, nothing's on my shoulders. I'm not happy in comparison to something else. I'm just completely joyous. And there's this idea of like, there it is. My dreams are running away from me. I'll be so happy when I'm there. Oh, that the dreams and the version of me that hasn't quite gotten there yet is probably having such a great time without me. And I'm, you know, the side, the, the grass is greener on that other side type of perspective. But I am being shown here that in fact, the sun card is in reverse. And this is how my spirit guide put it. They said, the dreams are meant to be bonded with you for this sun card, this good time to be upright. So as the dream card, the dream, dreams, <laughs> is scurrying away over here to this blissful field, it's not actually as great as you think it is until you get there and then you make it great by conjoining with the dreams. So just understand when you feel like you're missing out on all of this stuff, it can't even exist until you get there. This will stop you from constantly getting down, feeling like it's out of your grasp, feeling like you could be having a good time. No, there's no good time having being had 
until you get there. You're the good time. Do you see what I'm saying? So this will prevent the criticism towards yourself. And you can be more motivated and excited that like you're the party. You're bringing the party. The par it's They're waiting for you to show up for the party to begin. <laughs> so this is one pretty, this is such an abstract thing I think I've ever heard. But you get the gist of uh, the two perspectives to take on. Now carrying on, this is where this card with the Four of Pentacles gets more heavily associated with this uh, affirmation card. The affirmation card says, and I will read the back at the end of all of this. It says, I enjoy being healthy and doing what is good for me. But remember, healthiness is not always associated with things like food. In fact, uh, this is where it gets really interesting, um, and, and this is where it gets very philosophical. Many would argue it is healthy to go have a little, you know, snack, because when you do, you are not uh, refraining or like abstaining from having a good time. Like if you're making decisions out of like criticizing yourself and stuff like that, that's not really healthy. And it's not always associated with good food and or healthy food and bad food. It's the healthiness and nutrients you give to yourself from anything of being like, I'm taking the day off. You know, I'm just going to have fun and do something for me that has nothing to do for a career or, or anything that has to be associated, then it's like a pointless fun, like drawing a silly picture for no reason. It's not about posting it um, on any social media site to get recognition. It's just doing something for you. What is good for you that is going to give you nutrients for your energy, for your emotions, and so on and so forth. You get what I'm saying here? So it's more than, I'm trying to like widen the gap in categories to let your mind really be inspired by if, you, if you're like, oh, I don't need to work out and stuff like that. Is that what I got to do? No, no, no. It doesn't have to strictly be associated with that. Just think of what makes me feel like the best version of myself to cultivate even more good feelings, even more higher energy, even at more higher vibrations. You see what I'm saying here? Anyways, that concept gets continued over here. And this is what's interesting. So the four of pentacles upright is not being associated with money, but rather belief system. This is important to know if you're um, a fellow tarot reader, tarot, tarot reader, and you are learning the cards and trying to understand this. Sometimes pentacles refers to what you believe. It can actually also refer to your body, and it's just things we can taste and touch and feel and tangible stuff. But anyway, it's my spirit guide says it's strictly referring to the idea of like healthy habits, and we already covered the scope of what that means. It appears you're going through a time period where you're sort of hoarding them. And the best way I can explain this idea is that my spirit guide says that you need to consume it. Consuming can be eating it. Consuming can be like uh, reading a book, you know, that, you know, when you read a book, you're consuming it that way. And then sort of letting it go, you've consumed it, and then take on something else. And you're sort of in a very flowy vibe of like taking something on. So you're then receiving the nutrients of what you need from this situation or activity, and then letting it go, reaching for the next one. But right now it feels like you have a bunch of books. You have a bunch of, whether this be snacks or food, or I'm just trying to give a bunch of examples. You have a bunch of drawing supplies, but you're not actually giving yourself the opportunity to receive the nutrients because maybe you're afraid you're going to run out of it. Or maybe you keep making the excuse that you're going to get to it. You just haven't yet. Either way, it's being aware that you're not receiving the nutrients that you deserve to feel, but you're meant to build more of a flowy sort of open uh sort of think of it as like stagnant and then if you took it on this way you would be more momentous this idea gets uh, um wait i'm i don't want to jump too quick there's two things i want to say right here is that this is kind of acting as like a metaphorical momentum that is giving you inspiration just like this card to move from the just card and feeling frustrated that you're not getting what, what you want to build momentum to chase the dreams. Do you see how they're starting to all interlock with each other? And then over here, it's important when we bring up the idea of momentum again, because I'm being told that this is your subconscious going on. And this is now an explanation as to how a lot of these came to be. So in the two of, sword, uh, two of wands uh, upright, we have contradictory ideas. And this is why you haven't been receiving the things you need and why you're being told it's a necessity to build momentum by chasing after or by 
building this flow with consuming and then letting go of uh, the nutrient healthy tasks and then going after your dreams in the way we discussed is because your subconscious has a two of wands vibe. This is like you thinking, okay, I'm not quite yet ready yet to get the thing I want. So I'm going to keep saying I'm, I'm, I'm working towards it, but really I'm like, I keep saying in my head, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. When I receive this, I'll get this. It's a lot of planning going on. But then you have this contradiction where simultaneously on the outside, you're saying, I'm putting in the effort, I'm working towards this relationship, or I'm working towards this career, whatever, and I'm just not seeing results. I want to be in the version of myself that has left the planning stage and is in the process of being on the journey, better yet, at the end of the journey receiving it, but I am unaware that I have two contradictory things going on. I have the wish and desire and belief and thought process thinking I'm moving forward, but in fact, subconsciously, and I'm, and this is then dictating how I'm feeling consciously, I am just sort of stagnant and not going anywhere. This gets executed here. This is sort of your subconscious being um, uh, displayed outwardly through this hoarding mentality we talked about. So you know how to fix this by enjoying something, letting it go, reaching for the next one, taking sort of a floating mentality, which will then help you pull you out of this um, sort of seated stagnant position. This will then give you the motivation to start following the crumbs of good things coming your way to then lead to more of them and so on and so forth until you get to your end goal. And I am happy to say that the confirmation is there. The sun card in reverse is just letting you know that if along the way, if you kind of get any sort of doubt or discouragement, you can say, no worries. The party doesn't begin until I get there. So it's not like it's going without me. (laughs) <laughs> so the last thing we're going to do is just read the back of this affirmation card. So in case you're curious, you know, you can know about it and let's look at it. So we have, I enjoy being healthy and doing what is good for me. Use this gift when you feel resistant to doing what you know is in your best interest. The desire to sabotage our efforts to improve ourselves comes from our resistance to change. With self-improvement comes new activities friends, and other manifestations of change we so often resist because we fear the unknown. Ah, this makes so much more sense. (laughs) So I'm very excited for this momentum uh, to build in your life in a multitude of ways and just for you to enjoy along the way um, a sense of hope and adventure and feeling good and cultivating more good energy and vibrations and feeling like the best version of yourself inside and out. (laughs) Please let me know in the comments below, how do you feel like you're going to practice, you know, like we talked about consuming and letting go? What is the thing that you feel like you're holding on to that you would like? to treat yourself or what's the way you're going to treat yourself better i'd love to know in the comments Uh, also consider giving the video a like a subscribe hit that notification bell i am wishing you the best i will see you in the next one and let's get ready for group number two group number two let's look at those messages from your spirit guides by looking at the cards Here is your affirmation card which we will go over in greater detail at the very end i will read the back Our other cards are Six of Pentacles in reverse, the World card in reverse, the Chariot in reverse, and the Ace, wait, the Chariot card in reverse, Ace of Swords in reverse, and the Four of Cards in reverse. Okay, Four of Cups in reverse. Um, Let me look at everything to get all the information. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so this this affirmation card um, is actually being described a whole different way by my spirit guide, but we will be getting to that in a moment, and I will also be reading the back of that at the very end. So let's get started first with the chariot card. This is like the big one. So the chariot card is associated with the cancer sign, and I'm being told this is a situation related to the emotions. With the chariot card being in reverse, it is related to the idea that your emotions, you feel stuck in them, unable 
able to make a choice. My spirit guide describes it as being having trouble uh, choosing between sort of the light and the shadow self, decisions, whatever that may be. And it doesn't feel like you're unable to make a choice because you're avoiding one or you're trying to decide, decide um, you know, is this something you need to explore more or give more attention to? Because that often how it's how it can be when people either need to dive more into their shadow self or you know, give a little more attention to the light self in order to boost their optimism and stuff like that. You are unable to make a choice at all. It's like you see everything that needs to happen and you're not able to move forward because of it, because you're, it's too big of a decision. That sense of weight being given is associated heavily with the world card in reverse. The way my spirit guide describes this is something, once you have made this decision, is going to be concluded and it is being held up because you're not making a decision. This doesn't mean this conclusion is the end of receiving this dream or uh, even receive, receiving it or not receiving it. It's about a concept being colluded, concluded <laughs> in order to move to the next big chapter of uh, understanding something, perceiving something, whatever it is. It's this big feeling that once you make this decision, all this weight that's being held behind it will go away. But because you're kind of like right almost there at the end of it, uh, maybe you're afraid of what's going to be on the other side. You, you know, you're starting to panic and you're like, I can't, I can't, I don't know what to do. Now, the main thing being suggested here is in the Ace of Swords in reverse, that you need to take on a new sort of thought process mindset in order to break free of that. We can get more specific of the first sort of hints or clues. The way my spirit guide describes it is, these are the concepts that are being suggested that you should look into and you will naturally progress towards the next train of thought. It's like this train of thought that you have, it only has one path and you've kind of hit a dead end. These are the sort of new uh, railings that once you get on it, you will naturally know what to do next, ask next. It's a totally different perspective. The clues are given over here with the two different um, vinery hanging off of the crown. The way my spirit guide describes it is, this plant has these sort of little white berries hanging off and it, it gives nutrients to other people and gives something to other people. But this plant kind of acts as more of a defense or shading method for the plant, the tree or plant, whatever it came off of itself. So it's asking yourself, what is it that you currently are doing associated with this decision, everything like that? What is it that you do to protect yourself, to give yourself a sense of uh, defense? Um, you know, what do you do to benefit from yourself? And what do you do to benefit other people and help other people? It's not saying that you have to help other people. It's just asking that sort of abstract question. From there, though, we're trying to move away through this action um, and solve this answer from what's going on over here in the Four of Cups, which interestingly enough, my spirit guide says is being read both upright and reverse. When it's upright, it's this idea that you're in a bad mood. Um, often this card is created with, uh, or is like associated with the idea of being apathetic, but that's just not the vibe I get. It's much more not intense deep sadness just like frustration you're kind of uh, a little bit bored i don't know it's like how do i say this often this card is kind of like oh there's nothing to do vibe that's not what i'm feeling it has more sadness to it but not with a very intense there's not a lot of intensity behind that sadness. But either way, it's described as the bad mood card. You're just not feeling it. You're frustrated. It's a very stagnant place to be because nothing's inspiring you to make the next decision. We talk about that inspiration being given to you in order to start something new to help you move past this. But when it's in reverse, it is overcoming that bad mood. So on one way, it's being read where here's this bad mood, this is how you're going to overcome it, 
this is the sort of hint and clue, and this is going to help you face this going on. But it is also associated both upright and reverse with what's going on over here in the Six of Pentacles in reverse. And this is something that's super interesting and kind of came out of left field for me as I was listening to my spirit guides and I was like reading everything. So in this particular reading, the Six of Pentacles is, take, is displaying somebody who is being no what's the, what's the word like they're aware that they are asking you to owe them something you feel like you owe people you feel like you have to uh be the nice one you have to do all the work you know they're asking of it of you they're taking advantage of it and you feel like you owe it to them and that sense of and, and I didn't I wasn't clear enough this is a this is associated to somebody who's like generously giving out their energy emotions abilities hard work or whatever when it's in reverse people know what they're doing and they're taking advantage of that but the important thing here is you're feeling this sense of like guilt around it where you're like oh I have to it's the right thing to do I, I just can't help it I, I feel like I'm giving them the power so to speak and I have to do what they say if that makes sense and it seems like the answer to that is both in the reversal and the upright. So on one hand, it says, hey, upright, this is the thing that's blocking you and kind of causing you to not be able to make a decision. Um, you kind of are trapped in a cycle of attending to these other people's wishes and desires in that kind of way. Um, it's it's terribly boring to you. you. You're tired of the situation and system. But on the other hand, being aware that it is functioning this way and slowly saying to yourself like, you know what, I'm not happy with these options anymore. And I can not be frustrated about this, but look for inspiration elsewhere. That's another good way to express this card. This person has all of these things so much they're being given even more options and they're just not happy with any of it. But instead of feeling frustrated anymore, they realize, you know, if none of these things make me happy, I'm going to go find something that makes me happy and gets me excited. And that in itself is inspiring. So this is you saying to yourself, you know what, I'm not really happy with this dynamic anymore. And because I'm acknowledging that there is this dynamic, and I'm just saying no, and no matter what they try to sell me at, I'm aware that there are other options, and I will go seek them, and I'm saying no to this situation anymore. It's not working for me. This is sort of, you think of this as like your blockage from preventing you from making these feelings, uh, this clear choice. Once you're facing it in this kind of dynamic and way, this then enables your brain to open up enough to ask these questions we talked about again. What gives, how do you give nutrients to other people or benefit other people? How do you benefit yourself? And then let that inspire you to come to the final conclusion of what's going here. Now, the interesting thing of what my spirit guide says over here is in this affirmation card, they said, it is not to be read, I earn my living doing what I love but I enjoy my living doing what I love. It is no longer a time to view the interactions you have with others and when pursuing what you want as something that has to be earned, something that you can't have it unless you've put an X, Y, and Z amount of work. You can just have it because you want it and you love the process and you're already there. You're overcoming the mindset that it has to even be a part of the equation, the concept of earning. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is just read this um, back right here. I earn my living doing what I love. Use this gift when you feel unfulfilled by your present manner of employment. You created your present work situation and you can create a better one too. Take on work that nu <laughs> nurtures your mind, body, and spirit, and that of others. Whatever you do for a living, you can use your creativity to do it. Make your life a work of art and your art a work of life. That perfectly goes with what everything we were talking about. I love that. So please let me know what is a way that you benefit yourself and others. I, that can start the conversation in your mind and maybe somebody else's comment can help, can stimulate you to the next uh, question needing to ask to overcome this. I would love to know in the comments below. I read all of them. <laughs> anyway, in addition to this, if you wouldn't mind giving the video a like, please, and a subscribe, hit that notification bell, it helps out the channel like you would not believe. I am wishing 
wishing you the best. I will see you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number three. Group number three. Let's look at the messages from your spirit guides by looking at the cards. Here is your affirmation card that we will go over at the end of the spread. We have the other cards, four of swords in reverse, three of swords upright, two of swords upright, judgment in reverse, and the high priestess in reverse. Wow, the, the first thing I'm picking up um, before I just take a moment to look at everything and then ask my spirit guides is how many swords there are. Uh, swords deal with the mind, intellect, logic, that type of thing, and uh, can often be, well, they're not associated with emotions, and yet I'm picking up nothing but emotions. It's an extremely emotional spread and energy I'm picking up, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, so understand that I am picking up your emotions. I am feeling it. But here's the interesting thing. We're not meant to tap goal this situation in that kind of way. Um, so we'll be going over that in a second, but let me look at everything to get the details. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, I love this. Okay. This is, this is beautiful. So let's get into this. So first off, um, the number one thing you're going to be doing is taking a big old break, do whatever you need to, to take the day off. I would highly recommend more like a couple days off. Um, do whatever you can to, uh, get this sense of a break because you have been long overdue it do it for some time and it's now time to take advantage of that. It's going to have actually a lot of benefits. Uh, you do actually want to take advantage over this time of more sleep because of how it's going to help you with the situation with the three of swords. So I am seeing some form of pretty big pain popping up. Um, I'm not getting specifics. Normally I can be very specific if I'm picking up a specific like relationship, if someone cheated, betrayal. I mean, it, it is associated with this feeling of betrayal. That's the thing with the Three of Swords. It's like emotional pain where you feel like someone did you wrong. Um, the universe did you wrong. Something happened and you're carrying it and it's it's been really getting to you. It's potentially possible you haven't taken a break in a while because you don't want to face it. It's You don't want to be alone with your thoughts and feelings. Either way, I see it. I'm so sorry for you. But we actually have some answers to kind of let off some of the blame and how to tackle it beginning here and going forward over here. So the two of swords in this case represents what my spirit guide says is at the time associated with this heartbreak or uh, pain in any kind of way, emotional pain, you felt like you were the one that had to make some sort of decision. And you kind of still were like, did I make that right decision? It was so much weight on my so shoulders, so on and so forth. However, unbeknownst to you, it appears someone was preventing you from seeing that they were the one that was sort of making the ultimate decision, making you think you were making it. So you're sort of left with this emotional burden with what you had to choose, but in reality, it was never your choice to begin with, which is probably initially frustrating to hear, but it can allow you to give yourself permission to let go of that feeling. You got to stop being um, brash with yourself about it because in the end, it was their sort of manipulation and trickery that kind of, it's almost like they left you with the feeling. They didn't want to deal with the guilt, so they transferred the emotions to you, which I highly recommend watching my energy videos in my spiritual talk playlist. Um, both of them talk about how energy is very, it's basically directly associated with emotions. Our emotions are a byproduct of us picking up energy. And you can actually return to sender um, energy that other people can leave upon you. So definitely go watch those videos. But right now, I'm telling you, after you watch this video, you're going to intently say out loud, I return these energies to sender. These are not mine. I do not need to feel for them. I do not need to vibrate for them. I do not need to carry their energy. I'm giving it back to them. Say it out loud. Give it a lot of intention. Give it a second. And it will probably take a good hour before you feel like really come off you if it's not an instantaneous feeling. But this 
you, we don't even know it most of the time, but you can carry someone else's issues because they kind of like subconsciously gave it to you because they wanted you to work it out for them. You don't need to work it out for them anymore. And that will at least at the minimum help quite a bit. In addition to that, this is really beautiful. Um, my spirit guide says you're going to be doing a lot of healing by sleeping. So you're going to take a couple days off so you can breathe, relax, get what you need done. And while you're catching up on the Z's, <laughs> I sound so corny. Um, it's also going to be helping, which is great because sometimes when we're in this sort of um, difficult emotional state, you're tired of talking about it. You don't want to face it. And well, guess what? You kind of don't have to, which is really beautiful. So you'll gain more energy and do a lot of um, resolving of these this situation and past experiences over here, which I love for you. Now, going on forward, kind of from this scenario and more towards something else of like, imagine this is you tackling it and this is sort of you gaining a sense of like confidence and certain spiritual certainty in yourself and being like, yeah, I'm worthy is in these two cards. Now, this is actually not being read as the judgment card, but is in fact uh, in reverse. It's not even being read as the judgment card. It's actually being read upright, but it's being read in the way that it's heading towards the high priestess. It's like, we're taking all of this and now we're moving in this direction. But we want to look at the card upright just for the sake of looking at what the person is wearing, because this is what my spirit guide referred to. They said, see how she both wears a sort of gown or robe of space and she is also in the space you're basically being asked to in a particular scenario where it, i kind of keep being shown images of like you with other people weirdly i keep being shown a scenario of cooking um but it's a situation where when you're in that position do you feel there's two different scenarios that can pop up for this do you feel like when you're in a space with others, you are setting the tone with everyone else of being like, hey, I'm also not only in this environment with you, but I'm adding to the environment with my own. Um, this could be anything from working on something, you're building something. You're not just an observer. You're a part of the scenery too. You're in the scenery and you're a part of the scenery. And the other scenario is, is there something that you do privately that you don't feel confident maybe Maybe you think, oh, I'm not good enough to be with the rest of them that you do at home. So it's like the act of you wearing the robe with all these space plants, but you're not in the space. Can you take your beautiful robe of uh, space planets, uh, space plants, planets <laughs> into space, go to the space and then combine the two? It's important to kind of establish yourself with others and by proxy establishing yourself by realizing you are worthy of being here. You're both in it and you are just as much a part of it. In conjunction to that concept and idea, we have the High Priestess card upright. I'm being told by my spirit guide that you need to share your perspective a lot more. You are actually way more intuitive than you are giving yourself credit for. Your opinions matter more than you are realizing. This is not just intuition like psychic stuff, like kind of having a hunch. This is like you have good insight. And it's worthy of being heard. And people will come around to it. But you need to exercise realizing you have it by sharing it, seeing people's reaction of them accepting it, and seeing the positive after effects of them following it, seeing it, realizing when you notice something, maybe initially they don't agree with you, and then you see by the end of it you were right about that person. Start sharing these instincts that you have in your mind, and the thoughts and opinions you have, you are up to bar, par and worthy of being someone who can kind of embody these ideas and worthy wisdom and insight. So practice it so you in yourself can believe in it and then gain confidence, which I absolutely love. <laughs> so let's look at this affirmation card before we go. I have faith in the future I cannot see. That is very much what's going on here. It's this idea of when we're in struggling and then we're in pain, it just feels like we're so trapped in a combination of the present moment, uh, kind of a weird infinite moment where you're unable to um, see any, it's like it's always been this way. You can't imagine there's going to be ever a time without this sort of discomfort. And you're also simultaneously trapped by the memories that caused you to feel this feeling. So it's about not only escaping this and knowing it's going to get better, but it's about trusting that in the long term, you are building towards something that is going to make you excited, uh, uh, like about a possibility you didn't even dream of. Is there a version of yourself in the future where 
you know, sometimes when we're in a difficult emotional state, we just see ourselves as healed or not healed. Is there a third option? Is there an option where you're not only not in pain, but you're not even considering anymore? You're a totally different version. You're better off. You realize that you what was um, discomfortable before helped you better uh, realize that you were a lot more intuitive than you knew. And this was sort of like a test, if you can say that or not. But going on, I want to read the back for you. Use this gift when you are worried or anxious. These feelings are usually caused by our attachment to either a particular outcome or to wanting to know exactly how things are going to turn out. Though oracles can predict events and enough clarity to be helpful, with an, uh, with enough clarity to be helpful, we have the power to change our future. How many of your past worries never came to pass? Beautifully put. Love that for you. <laughs> so I'm excited for you to heal and be empowered always the best possible way. Please let me know in the uh, comments below, how are you going to be part of your, the space, so to speak? And what is the space? I'm actually genuinely very curious, very abstract perspective, my spirit guide said, or please share a little bit of wisdom that you at the time didn't feel confident enough in yourself to share, but you ended up being right. I'd love to know. Uh, anyways, please consider also giving this video a like and a subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It helps out like you would not believe. I'm wishing you the best. I will see you in the next one. And let's get ready for our final group, group number four. Group number four. Let's look at those messages from our spirit guides by looking at the cards. Here is our affirmation card. And we will read that at the end and go over everything. And I'll read the back at the very end. Ooh, very beautiful moon card. We have four of cups upright the moon card upright, the four of wands in reverse, the page of cups in reverse, and a very cool four of swords upright. Give me a moment to just look at this to see all of the messages coming in. Oh, Okay, uh, this is going to be a pretty point blank simple one. I absolutely love this. <laughs> so it's just all positive and very sweet and dreamy and we love that. So first let's start off with the moon card. The moon card in this case is being brought to my attention with the way that this moon is. My spirit guide said that this is a waxing moon, which is important. The waxing moon is a sign of energy being built towards the full moon. This is a good time to dream, inspire, set your intentions, but specifically start taking action in sort of positive ways. So I think the best way I can describe it is like, um, yeah, sure. Like, let's say you're, you're, you want to run a marathon. Yes, for sure. You can go jogging. But at the minimum, if you start going out and buying the sneakers, maybe you go for a walk one day, you haven't quite gotten to the point of running, but you're getting there. You know what I mean? It's kind of like pre-jog, so to speak. And I'm not saying you can't go out and jog and then in turn you know work your way up to the ability to be in that marathon and practice it but you get the sort of vibe behind it so with the moon card popping up this is all about you saying you know what I'm inspired what inspires me I'm gonna dream about it I'm gonna start making and taking the actions towards it which is very important which is exciting for you it seems that you're coming out of a very boring time period oh my goodness four of cups can either be boring because it's just boring boring because none of the options are good I mean it would make sense during the situ the time period right now that you might be kind of like stuck at home you've seen the same thing over and over again and you tell Tired of it. So essentially, the moon card is saying, you know what, now is the time to dream. Is there something you've been wanting to do? Maybe you've wanted to take some sort of course or develop some sort of skill in a professional sense where you take some sort of certificate program or something like that. Maybe you've always wanted to be a painter and you want to go rent a log cabin and paint in it for a couple days. You get what I'm saying here? How are, what are you doing in order to to move forward in that way. And these are the concepts that you can kind of mull over in the dreaming stage. Now we get some clues on how to know if you're headed in the right direction in your dreams and, in, and kind of also, I don't wanna say warnings, but 
clues that when they pop up, you can go, mm, I'm not going to give this attention anymore. This is not going to enable the momentum I'm trying to build to go anywhere. Uh, so when we have the four of wands in reverse, I'm being told by my spirit guide, it's about the idea that both you and either someone else or something else, something could be like, you know, a company, whatever, should both mutually be working towards the same thing. So it's both the confirmation that the thing that you're dreaming about that you would like to come into fruition. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a career. It can be like a fun idea. It feels like a very fun card. It's just something inspiring, but it will become something tangible more than a fun dream or idea. You might potentially be a pretty decent painter by the end of this, which is really cool, that kind of idea. Um, but there should be, uh, whatever you're trying to approach, you need to put an effort. You can't ha wait for it to come your way. But at the same time, if you're moving towards making this thing happen and the other half that should be working together in order to come towards you isn't working out, that is the clue that you no longer need to give that attention and you need to approach it in a different way. To give you a couple examples, let's say your dream and aspiration is to, you know, you want to approach your crush and let them know you're into them. As you're approaching them and trying to text them, reach out to them in some way, if they're not returning and try that effort um, equally and they're trying to actively, you know, ask you out and stuff like that, that's not the person for you. Go find that crush somewhere else. This isn't the road you're meant to take. Consider this sort of the compass to figure out if you're headed in the right direction. Um, same thing, let's say you're trying to approach painting and somehow it's just so difficult to get the supplies you don't know what the issue is maybe you're not meant to do painting maybe you're meant to do um charcoal or maybe you're not meant to get painting supplies and practice on your own but you're meant to sign up for a class you get what i'm saying here so sorry about that. I had a couple neighbors walking by and they were just talking um, loudly and I wasn't sure if it was going to come up on the mic. Not a big deal. Anyway, um, back to what I was saying is if the, you know, you're trying to reach, um, maybe you're meant to take a course instead and, and go that route. You'll understand if it shouldn't be difficult. They should be wanting you to join it and you should be wanting to join it as well. There should be mutual effort both ways. Anyway, going on further, there seems to be a bit of mysticism wrapped around this concept of dreaming and what to do next. And it should be a very fun process. Think of it, this whole concept, like a treasure hunt of like, uh, I'm moving forward. I don't know what's the next clue, but I'm going to discover it. And it seems you're going to actually be discovering this clue in the four of swords and the page of cups in reverse through dreams, which is really fun. So I highly recommend starting a dream journal. This means as soon as you wake up in the morning or a nap or whatever, and you're half awake, draw, jot down kind of what you initially keywords you can think of. And then when maybe you feel a little more comfortable, you can go in a little more detail. And those details are going to come through sort of um, messages from the universe is how the sort of page of cups is being described here. So what I mean by that is if you in your dream see an animal, uh, whatever happens, start to break it down metaphorically. Ask yourself, hmm, it seems like I'm always shown this location. Is that location an actual place I can go to? Or they want me to go in nature. Does that mean I literally go out into nature to see what happens, you know, what's the next cl uh, clue or synchronicity? You're going to just kind of be asking the universe, hey, universe, what do I do next? And you will be shown most of these clues through your dreams. So you want to take note of them so you can see what happens next. It will be kind of a reflection of you'll make a choice from a dream and then you'll have a new dream. And then that dream will indicate to you if that was the right choice to make and so on and so forth. And you'll get really good at interpreting your dream. But when we have a page of cup situation, don't don't think too far in advance. Let this be something that you kind of have fun with. Again, it's very artistic. As you're dreaming and making choices and you're sh and seeing what's kind of giving back to you as you're putting in the effort and it's putting in the effort back and you're like, okay, I'm heading in the right direction. You're taking notes in your dream. This is going to indicate to you what should you be painting? What else should you be adding to it? What does this all mean? You see what I'm saying here? Anyways, you're going to take it one step at a time, one dream at a time. Don't think too large. Don't get too set on, okay, this is going to be my career. This is going to be that. Just wait for the next clue. Find out what that means. This is going to be a very float your boat type of vibe. It should be very chill. Think of dreaming as your new fun hobby and interpreting it your new skill you develop in addition to all of this. <laughs> so let's go over that affirmation card finally as the last thing because this totally is another great clue to work towards. How do I know 
what will get me inspired and what I should work towards if I'm not quite sure of what the dream is. I surround myself with beauty and positive people. That's huge. Use this gift when the world seems a frightening place or when people refuse to support you in your positive efforts. Remember, your actions to improve yourself are threatening to those who want to control you or resist improving themselves. Use beautiful art, music, and creativity of all kinds to remind you how wonderful and enjoyable life is. So I would highly recommend starting to keep some sort of like a Pinterest board or something like that. At the minimum, start the practice of dreaming, both in the real world and when you're asleep. And you're going to start putting together things until you start to notice some kind of combinations that you're like, man, I'm really into interior design. Maybe I want to look more into interior design. Can I do something with that? Can I take a class? Can I practice that? Can I read up on that? What does this mean? You know what I mean? Start putting those things together in order to inspire the next step. That's very much the vibe you're feeling. The next thing is going to show the next thing and the next thing. And again, don't put pressure on this, what it means, what it is. It should be a blast. It should be like your own version of summer camp, which I love. (laughs) So anyways, please let me know in the comments below. Is there a specific dream that you want to now kind of build up and work towards? Something you've always wanted to try and you want to make it actually tangible, something build upon? Please let me know. I'm genuinely very curious. Do you already have a dream journal? I would, I would love, oh my goodness, I would love to hear some dreams. I know those are personal. So like, you know, we, you know, you share what you're comfortable with, but I would love to know if you have any cool dreams to share. Anyways, um, ooh, I should do a video on dreams. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video on dreams, because that is sort of like, I can go into specifics of like, and I can go to the Kashuk Records and find if it's specifically channeling, journeying, what that means. We can go into all that. Anyway, uh, please, in addition to this, let me know in the comments below if I, uh, or if you liked it, give it a like <laughs> and subscribe hit that notification bell. I am wishing you the best. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.